Hi, and in today's Microsoft Word tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create this very simple letterhead and save it as a template. So let's get started. So the first thing I'm going to do is insert my logo. So I'm going to do this by going up to the Insert tab, going down to Pictures, clicking on the drop down and select Picture from File. Then I've just got this demonstration logo, which I'm just going to insert here. Now, depending on how your logo appears, this is a PNG file, which means the background is completely blank. And I've just got the words here. But at the moment, I can't really move this around. It's a bit clunky. So what I need to do is to ensure that I'm on picture format, which is this tab here. If this doesn't appear, it's because you haven't got your logo selected. So if I click off, you can see that it disappears. So just click back on, go up to picture format and go along to wrap text. You can also right click on your logo and wrap text will also appear. Click on the drop down and I normally select in front of text. As I do that, it enables me to move my logo wherever I want it on the page. So I'm not too worried about that where that is at the moment because we'll come back and just make sure that everything is aligned at the end. So the next thing I want to do is to insert some graphics at the top here. So again, go up to insert, then I'm going to go along to shapes, click on the drop down and I'm going to select this square here. Then just click and drag. And then again, we can move this anywhere we want to in our document. So I'm just going to put mine about here. Now, obviously, this probably isn't the color that you want. So again, make sure that shape format is checked up here. If it's not, again, you haven't selected your shape. Select the shape and then go along to this section here. So the first thing we want to do is to identify whether we want a border or not. So I always click no border, particularly if it's just a solid shape. And then go down to fill shape, click on the drop down and you've got a number of different color options here. Now if you don't find the color that you want, simply go down to more fill colors here and your color wheel will appear. So on here, you've just got this little icon here which you can move anywhere around this color wheel to select a color of your choice. Or you've got other options at the top here. Just click on this box here. And you've got lots of different color options that you can choose from. And select a color of your choice. Now I've already selected a color earlier, so I'm just going to go to this pink. And then just click off and our graphic appears. And then we're just going to put a little contact sign in here. So go up to insert and go along to text box. Click on the drop down and select draw text box. Click and drag. And then just insert your text. Oh. And then just go back up to shape format and click on the drop down, select no outline. Go to shape fill, click on the drop down and select no fill. And there you just have your text in a box where you can just move that round. So I'm just going to click and highlight that text by selecting Command or Control A, then go to the Home tab, and then go down to this color font color icon. And then I'm just going to select white. I'm just going to make that font a little bit bigger. I'm going to go up to this increase font size icon and just click on that a few times until I'm happy with the size. Just extend the box out. And then I'm just going to place that on the bottom corner here. Now I'm just going to check that font because I'm going to select another font that I'm going to use for the remainder of this tutorial. So I'm just going to go down to this font here. And then those letters are a little too close for me. So I'm going to right click, go down to font, and then yours might appear on this font element here. And then just go to the advanced tab there, go down to this spacing option, click on the drop down and select expand. Now by default, one point will come up and I'm happy with that. So I'm just going to click OK. If you want to make these letters a bit further apart, then obviously you can choose a slightly higher value. And then just go and check that you're happy. Might just move that over a little bit. OK. So then we're just going to put some contact details down here. And then I'm going to do that is to click insert again, go to text box, click draw text box, and I'm just going to click and drag. 
Now I'm just going to go and grab and copy my text and then insert it in here. Okay, now when you normally insert text, it will, it will generally be aligned to the left-hand side. In order to align your text to the right-hand side, just make sure it's all highlighted, Command Control A, and then just go up to the Home tab, and then you can align your text using these tabs here. There's left, center, right, and justify. Obviously, you've got this border going around the outside, so again, we need to get rid of that. Highlight the text box, go up to Shape Format, and again, along to this icon here, click on the drop down and select No Outline. And then you can move this over just using your arrow key so they line up exactly where you want them. It doesn't have to be with the edge of the pink box, but I've chosen to do that for this demonstration, so I'll just keep it there. Now, I've created this text box without a border and with the text that I want. So all I'm going to do now is click on that text box, select Command or Control C to copy it, click off it, Command or Control V to copy it, uh, to paste it, and then just move it down to here. And then we can use this text box for the next batch of text that I want. So I'm just going to select it all and delete it. And then I'm going to go and grab the text that I need and insert it here. OK. Once I'm happy with that, I'm just going to copy and paste it twice more. Now you don't have to do this, if you want to put all this information into just one continuous text box, you can do that. But for me this allows you a little bit more flexibility to adjust various elements and then I can choose to take elements out if I don't want them or change them. It just gives me a little bit more flexibility. So again I'm just going to go and get the text for this one, copy and paste it. Then just reduce the size of this text box and do exactly the same with this bottom one here. Get rid of that and do the same with this one. Now once you're happy with all of these, to just line them all up, you can just simply hold the command key down and just click on each one and it will select all three. Then ensure you're on shape format at the top and go to the align tab here. Click on the drop down and I'm going to se select align to left. As you can see, they've all lined up. Again, I want them equally spaced apart, so back up to the Align tab, click on the drop-down, and we're going to click on Distribute Vertically. Then what happens is everything is distributed equally. Now, if you want to decrease the gaps between them, then all you need to do is just move those up slightly, and then do exactly the same thing. Just go up to Align, make sure they're aligned to the left, and then Distribute Vertically. And again, you've now got them exactly where you want them. Now, so that we don't nudge these out of place, I'm going to group them. So I'll highlight them all again and go up to this icon here, click on the drop down and select group. Now, this means that once I've done that, I can move them around as a whole, which is really convenient when you're trying to make up a letterhead. So back up to my logo and I'm just going to insert some text on here. So I'll select this text box again, copy and paste it. Just means I don't have to continually keep deleting borders and using the different text, it's all in there for me. And then I'm just going to create a little line to the left here as a little element of interest. So click on the insert tab, go along to shapes, and then I'm going to select this line icon here and then I'm just going to click and drag. Now, once my line is highlighted, I've got these two green balls on both ends. I'm gonna go along to the menu over here. Now, if this menu doesn't appear, then all you need to do is ensure that your shape is highlighted, ensure you're on shape format, and then go along to this format pane icon here. Or you can just simply double click on your shape and it will appear to the right. Once you've done that, normally your menu will look like this. Make sure you're on the bucket icon and then click on the line icon. And then I'm going to go down to width here and I'm going to increase the width of my line. And then I'm going to change the colour to the pink we selected earlier. Click on the drop down and select that pink colour. I'm just going to line these two up. 
where I want them. And again, once I've, I'm happy with the spacing, if I hold the command key down and select them both, I'm going to go up to group and make them into a group. So now I can just move that round as one element. Now, the last thing I'm going to do with the graphic element is to put a border around my logo. Now, my logo came as a box like this. So what I can do is put a thin line around the edge of that box to highlight my logo. So all I'm going to do is highlight the logo. So make sure you're on picture format and make sure you've got your menu over here on the right. Now again, go down to line, click on solid line. And then I've just got my width at 0.75 and I've got my color set to pink again. And then if you click off, you'll see there's a lovely pink border around the edge of my logo. Now the reason there is a gap here is because this box here, this box here where I've written my text, has actually got a white background. So if you wanted the line to continue through there, then you would have to go up to your shape format and then go along to the shape fill icon here, click on the drop down and select no fill. And there you can see that the line continues all the way through. But I actually quite like that split there. So I'm going to fill mine with white. So it leaves that little gap for this element to go through. Once you're happy and you've lined everything up, you don't have to line this up with the edge of the box. You can line it up with the actual text that you set here. So then you can use your arrow keys just to move left and right if you want to. And now finally, just to the text that you'll put in the main body of the letter. Again, we're going to use a text box. So I'm actually going to use this text box that I've used before, copy and paste it. I'm going to stretch that out, highlight my text, Command or Control A and delete it. And then I'm going to just type the text. See, before I do that, I'm going to put the main body of text in. Just double click on this and I'm going to go up to the Home tab and make that element bold. Now the reason I put this text into a text box is because it just makes it so much easier to move it around and align it wherever I want. So if it doesn't look quite right and you've typed it all out, you have to nudge it all and fiddle with the borders and the tabs and all sorts. Whereas actually, if you do it like this, it's just so much easier. You can move everything around, you can make it bigger, smaller, and it just creates an awful lot of flexibility. So you can line it up again with the edge here if you want to, but you can also put it in the middle. It's completely up to you. It's just really versatile. Now for the last thing, you want to put a signature in. So there are two ways to do it. If you want to, you can just continue this signature block down here. So I'm just going to highlight that and put it in bold. Cool. So you can continue like that if you want to, or you can make this a completely separate text box. Again, it's up to you. It depends what flexibility you want. Now, if you do want to add a digital signature, then I have a video on that, which you can make it completely in Word. I will link in the description below. Now, once you're happy, just quickly go through, make sure it's all aligned, make sure you're happy with it all. And then you can go ahead and say this is a template. And what that does, it means that you've got it saved into your home templates and you can go back to it and use this template over and over again. Because what will happen is when you load it up, it will actually come up as a new document. So when you go to save it, it will ask you to be saved as a different file name. So you'll never overwrite this template. And the way to do that is to go up to your file tab. Now at the moment you can't quite see it um, because I haven't highlighted my entire screen. So go up to the file tab right at the top of your screen next to Word. And then you should have an option that says save as template. And you can see it's been saved here in the templates file. 
and it's also the file format down here is Microsoft Word template. Then go ahead and save it as whatever you want and then click save. Once you've done that, to check that it's there, go to the home tab, you'll see this layout. If you go up to more templates, then you should have featured templates and then just click personal and there you can see your letter has come up as a template. Then you can go ahead and click on that as many times as you want to. Your format will come up and all you'll need to do is change the writing and the date and the company name and then when you save it it will be asked you'll be asked to save it as a separate document and then this template will remain here for further use. So I hope that's helped you today. If it has, please subscribe and have a great day.